hand so that it shouldn't be looked as if it's an ethnic crisis or religious crisis. Federal government sets up committee to find a lasting solution to farmers' headsmen crisis. The yearning of the people must be adhered to, and that is what they have done. By going outside their own way and going into their manifesto to say, okay, this is what we promised before coming to power. All Progressives Congress receives a pat on the back for coming up with a workable document on true federalism. Federal government to develop a framework for sustainable national emergency response. Good evening and welcome to the Network News tonight. We are live from Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. I am Donald Overejo. Adimola Adewi is in our Lagos Center, Network Center, while Kemi Akiwande is on standby in Ibadan. Welcome. Determined to end the farmers and pastoralists crisis, the federal government has set up a fact-finding committee to throw more light on the causes and recommend ways of bringing the crisis to an end. The committee is headed by Governor of Ebony State, Dave Umai. Governor of Zamfara State, Yari says the committee is part of the resolutions from the meeting of the National Economic Council Working Group on Farmers and Headsmen Clashes presided over by Vice President Yamio Shimbajo with a commitment to end all such crises. Uh, federal government, state government under the leadership of the Vice President, in the neck we agreed to have a small committee so that we can discuss it. It shouldn't go out of hand, so that it shouldn't be looked as if it's an ethnic crisis or religious crisis. So now, in our discussion today, we have set a committee headed by governor of Ibo State, Plato and Admawa, and we're bringing some other technocrats that will visit the uh, hotspot states, Benue, Taraba, Zampara, and Admawa, where there are those crises, so that they can interface with the Meti Allah and other group and see how we can be able to put this matter to the, a minimal Governor Yari said it has been discovered that there are some criminals hiding under the guise of farmers' headsmen to commit crimes, making it difficult to get immediate solutions. He said the government is ready to bring the criminals to book. The Nigeria Police Force says it is re-strategizing on its mode of operation with a view to combating emerging security challenges. Inspector General of Police Ibrahim Idris stated this at a meeting with officers from the rank of Commissioner of Police and above in Abuja. Olajide Bello reports. The forum is an avenue for the Inspector General of Police and Police Hierarchy to brainstorm on ways to improve the services of the force. On the recent pockets of attacks experienced in parts of the country, the IGP says the force will not relent until the perpetrators are brought to book. Ahead of the 2019 general elections, the police force called on officers and men to brace up and be more dedicated. All of us are aware about these prohibited firearms. You cannot give approval for any individual to own a pistol. You cannot give approval for any individual to own an AK-47 rifle. These are prohibited weapons. And only the government has that authority to give that approval. So I want to call on our commissions of police of various commands. You have to be on a close watch out to this abuse of authority at various levels. Earlier, the Giz and German Embassy in Nigeria presented equipment to boost the information dissemination of the Nigeria Police Force in Abuja, Olajide, Bello, NTA News. The federal government says it will build six more prisons across the country as part of its desire to reduce overcrowding in the nation's prisons. Minister of Interior Lieutenant General Abdurrahman Dambazao stated this at the public presentation of three Nigerian prisons survey reports, Femi Okawu reports. 
Even while declaring the realization that building more prisons would not necessarily solve the problem of congestion, the Minister of Interior said it is still important for the nation to invest in the reformation and modernization of its corrective institutions. He said the federal government will therefore build six 3,000 capacity prisons, one in each geopolitical zone of the country. But he added that the best way around the problem of high number of awaiting trial inmates in prisons is for all participants in the nation's criminal justice system to work together to fast-track criminal trials. In order to deal with this situation, <laughs> there is need for the Department of Public Prosecution to look at how it processes or what kind of procedure should be adopted in prosecuting cases. The prison survey report, which is in three volumes, is a collaborative research between Nigeria Prison Service and the Prison's Rehabilitation and Welfare Action, PRAWA, to help bring about statistics and data that will improve the running of the nation's prisons. Unfortunately, we have seen that our prisons today are not at their best. Today, the prison service has gone a long way, both in its reorganization and in its focus. Prisons used to be seen as a minority community that the nation could afford to ignore. But more and more, with the events of the Nigerian situation now, people are getting to know that this community's welfare is also tied to the nation's security and general well-being. In Abuja, Femi Okewo, NT News. Nigerians from across various political divides and some members of civil society organizations have welcomed the recommendations of the APC Committee report on true federalism, saying it's in line with the yearnings and aspirations of all Nigerians. Political correspondent Abdullahi Garba Birnin Kudu reports. Having digested some of the items recommended by the APC through Federalism Committee, the respondents praise the APC as a party for spearheading the move. And the yearning of the people must be adhered to, and that is what they have done. By going outside their own way and going into their manifesto to say, okay, this is what we promised before coming to power, and we are now, we are, now we are in power. And not just calling on people, calling on eminent Nigerians to come and brainstorm, to come and think of what is the way for what is better for the country. It's better late than never. And um, we will urge the party to live through this time to its promise and ensure that they follow through. There's time, as one full year, for that report to be implemented. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm 100% support. If we have, if we move. You know, unfortunately, I come from the riverine area. If you swim and you see that you are getting drowned, you swim back. Let us do it in such a way that we can all accommodate ourselves and live in peace. Nigeria needs peace, so honestly. Of concern, however, is the political will to implement the proposals to the fullest and possibility of politicizing the process. Our party is making this. It's need for the other parties to also say this is what you know our own uh, strategy for restructuring is, or these are the issues that we have talked about. So if there's a convergent views, you know, between the party A and party B and other parties, then it is easy to you know make you know legislative you know um, action. You know, easy. The APC has made public the recommendations of the True Federalism Committee for more inputs from cross sections of Nigerians. In Abuja, Abdullahi Gerba Brunonkudu, NTA News. Second Republic politician Alhaji Tanko Yakasai has applauded the ruling All Progressives Congress APC and the Nasser El Rufai led committee for coming up with clearly defined recommendations on true federalism. Mansur Ali Hassan Inkanu says the recommendations are in tandem with that of the 2014 National Conference. The Nasser El Rufai Committee's recommendations on true federalism, according to Alhaji Tanko Yakasai, reflects about 80 to 90 percent of the outcome of 2014 National Conference. Among the major issues of the recommendations, the elder statesman threw his weight behind includes that of the resource control. 
no recognition of local governments as a tier of government. Local government council should no longer be considered as a tier of government. But states should be allowed to create as many local governments as they deem necessary. But they should not form part of the constitution. States should be allowed to merge with one another, one another if they deem appropriate. Al-Haji Yaka say therefore called on Nigerians to support the recommendations irrespective of their ethnic differences or party affiliations up to the time when they are implemented through the constitutional provision. Mansur Ali Yuhasan, NTA News. Top Ijo leaders have been meeting to have a common position on the voting pattern come 2019 general elections. The meeting hosted by Ijo National Leader Chief Edwin Clark resolved to vote any candidate who shows enough commitment to restructuring. Telma Eliogu reports. The meeting which held behind closed doors lasted four hours. Briefing newsmen afterwards, the governor of Bayasa State, Syriaka Dixon, said the leaders took a critical look at the issues of restructuring and affirmed their position that it is a matter of survival of the Ijo people. He said the meeting, which had in attendance the deputy governor of Delta State, Kinsley Otwaro, and other Ijo leaders from Edo, Akwaibon, and Ondo states, resolved that Ijo people will only vote candidates with genuine and demonstrable support for restructuring irrespective of political party. People shouldn't play politics with this serious issue of restructuring. But let me also, on behalf of our people, uh, make it clear uh, that the next election, the 2019 general election, for us as the job people, for us in the Niger Delta, is going to be a referendum on restructuring. Chief Edwin Clark, who also spoke, insisted that any presidential candidate who is opposed to restructuring will face rejection in Ijoland during the election. Whoever wants to be the, the president of this country must be the one who has a sincere mandate saying that he believes in restructuring. The meeting also set up a 15-man committee which has five representatives each from the three zones that make up the Ijo nation. Their responsibility is to look into the issue of restructuring and report to the APC Committee on Restructuring. The committee will submit its report within three weeks. Thelma Eliog, NTA News. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo has formally registered as a member of the Coalition for Nigeria Movement, CNM, but stated that if the movement becomes a political party or seeks political affiliation, he will cease to be a member. Correspondent Lukman Adifeso reports that the ceremony was attended by some former governors and ministers, amongst other political elites. It is an assemblage of like minds who came together under the platform of Coalition for Nigerian Movement, CNM. Former President Olusha Obasanjo, who is the convener of the forum, used the event to register his membership with the movement, which he described as a pressure point towards good governance and out to accommodate all Nigerians, irrespective of political, ethnic, or religious affiliations. This is the commencement for our popular and grassroots association. Of course, the membership will be free to collectively decide on whether CNM becomes a political party. If the movement decides to transform itself and go into partisan politics, I will cease to be a member. The former president maintained that the movement has the mandate, among others, to foster unity, development, and rule of law. The European Union says it will continue to collaborate with the federal government in its drive towards the promotion and consolidation of democratic principles in the country. Head of EU delegation to Nigeria and ECOWAS, Ambassador Ketil Carlson, said this in Abuja at the launch of European Union support to democratic governance in Nigeria. Chukunomso Mwabweze has the details. 
elections in Nigeria will also build on the recommendations of the EU election observation mission made after the 2015 general elections, as well as other reports of the European Union expert identification and formulation mission to Nigeria. It is our aim to contribute to the reinforcement of democracy in Nigeria and beyond through building strong, effective and legitimate democratic institutions anchored in the priorities of the Nigerian government. I want to seize this opportunity to assure all present here and all Nigerians that the 2015 election was a watershed in the history of our elections. But our commitment is that the 2019 general elections is going to be better. The current administration is fully committed to improving the country's electoral system through the fight against corruption and unethical practices in electoral processes. But how prepared are other critical stakeholders in Nigeria's electoral process in ensuring the successful implementation of the program? We are doing a lot. In fact, IPAC on its own had started this by making a law to all political parties that at all levels of inter-party advisory council, there must be two women representatives. The 26.5 million euros initiative, which is being funded under the 11th European Development Program, is for the period of five years, that is between 2017 and 2022. In Abuja, Chukunon Songwa Boeze, NTN News. President Muhammadu Buhari has nominated Edward Lametek Adamu for, the, for Senate confirmation as Deputy Governor of the Central Bank. A statement by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adishino, says the President's nomination is in accordance with the provisions of Section 8, Subsections 1 and 2 of the Central Bank of Nigeria Establishment Act 2007. The statement adds that in a letter to the Senate President, Bukola Saraki, dated January 26, 2018, President Buhari explained that Mr. Adamu from Gombe State replaces Sulaiman Barao from Zaria, Kaduna State, who retired in December 2017. The nominee, who has spent 25 years in the CBN, was appointed Director of Strategy in 2012 and became Director of Human Resources in 2016. Senate raises concern over causes cases of Lassa fever outbreak just as the House of Representatives considers bill to end gas flaring. advantage that puts you in front of everyone else. Be the first to have an immersive movie experience. 1000 Naira equals 2 gigabytes. That's 30 hours of video content. With the power to broadcast yourself, the world is your stage. 2,500 Naira equals 7.2 gigabytes that lets you upload 120 hours of dance video. Get the unfair advantage powered by full data unmatched. Also enjoy free YouTube and iFlex. Down Star 777 hash. The largest data network. Glow, Grandmasters of Data. Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, brings a new lease of life to Nigeria SMEs. SON has put a greater premium on developing standards to improve made in Nigeria products for export. We have developed more standards for products like Sesame, Coco, Gary, and more, courtesy of our accredited state of the art laboratories. In keeping with the federal government's ease of doing business, SON has simplified its processes and turned around time for SOMCAP, MANCAP, and other certification products. Processes. SON has intensified market surveillance, raids, and seizures to reduce substandard products in circulation, and offenders shall be prosecuted. Join SON in reading our nation of substandard products. If you see something, say something. Standards Organization of Nigeria, improving lives through standards. Finally, you are most welcome. You saw it's an emergency. Our work here has just been confirmed. Empty Hemp is back. 
Do you know yet? Unfortunately, that is precisely the case. In fact, they have already started to showcase themselves to the fullest maximum. Now, we try so much to keep them in shape, but then they are always one step in our future. Now, it didn't matter whether they are cool or they are not cool. What really matters is that they are having a network that permits them to showcase the character that they truly have. I'm so sorry, but this you cannot purchase in the market. We must stop them. I'm afraid to be the carrier of a bad news, but it's already late. I think we must go. CSO, what are you doing? You mean myself? I'm moving to empty Hempers with immediate effect. How? Oh. Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGB Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country just a week crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Sensitivity is a short pain which occurs when teeth are exposed to hot, cold or acidic things. Cold water from the fridge would, would trigger sensitivity. A lot of people would accept anyway and just grin and bear the pain. What I would say to the patient is switch to Sensodyne, make it your daily toothpaste over a period of time would reduce tooth sensitivity. And a lot of them come back to, tell, you know, to thank me, to say that, wow, it's just something so simple. It adds the sparkle back into their life. In January 2015, the world's most deadly terrorist group, Boko Haram, controlled 20 local government areas in Borneo State and operated freely in five other northeastern states in Nigeria. Other than committing the second worst terror attack after 9-11, their bombing sprees reached Bauchi, Kano, Abuja and as far as Zaria. They killed more than 23,000 people, kidnapped more than 2,000 people, including the 276 Chibok girls, and caused the displacement of more than 2.3 million people. By the end of 2015, the Buhari administration turned the tide of the war, and Boko Haram was routed from Sambisa Forest. By October 2016, 21 of the Chibok girls were released since April 2014, and in May 2017, another 81 Chibok girls were freed. By December 2016, Boko Haram was technically defeated and subsequently reduced to a handful of sporadic attacks. The Senate has raised concerns over the recent cases of Lassa fever outbreak in several states across the country. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Agun Adegun Loye reports that following a motion on the urgent need to support the Center for Research, Control and Treatment of Lassa Fever in Nigeria, the lawmakers came up with various resolutions. These latest cases of Lassa Fever in the states of Edo, Undo, Eboni, Nasarawa, Kogi and the FCT, among others, prompted this motion moved by Senator representing Edo Central, Clifford Odia. The geometric rise in suspected cases are risen to 363 as against lesser number of cases recorded in previous years. We should find a way of funding the budget to take care of preventing this disease that is killing people every year. This is something that has been with us for over 40 years. And yet we are still talking of only one laboratory. The National Road Funds Establishment Bill 2018, sponsored by Senator Kabiru Gaya, representing Kano South, was passed. The Senate passed this bill and considered areas for where funding will come from the PIB bill, PIGB bill, to 
assist on the structure on the roads. Also passed were the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 2004 Repeal and Reenactment Bill 2018 and the Emergency Powers Repeal and Reenactment Bill 2018. Meanwhile, Chairman Senate Committee on Media and Public Affairs Ali Sabi Abdullahi has briefed newsmen on the saga surrounding the acting chairman of the EFCC. After a court's judgment on the powers of the Senate on nominations brought before it. And that judgment is saying clearly that the Senate not only has the power to confirm but to reject when it deems it necessary, as in the case in question. Senate President Bukola Saraki says the Police Academy Bill will be fast tracked. While engaging the chairman of the Police Service Commission, Mike Okiro, Saraki said the commission has a significant role to play in identifying security challenges and ensuring professionalism in the police force. I think it's a time for us to find solutions. And I think those solutions that we need to find have to be realistic in our approach. Saraki also emphasized the perception of the public is key. From the National Assembly, Dennis at Digunluye, NTA News. Health Minister Isaac Adewale today in Abuja launched the National Policy on Emergency Medical Services and Guidelines for Ambulance Services in Nigeria. Uche Mizu reports that deliberations are ongoing on the framework for an effective, efficient and sustainable national response system. Medical emergency calls across all aspects of daily life, ranging from accidents, pregnancy, food poisoning, disease outbreak, among others, where prompt response could avert deaths. Regrettably, Nigeria has only 1,000 registered ambulances from both public and private hospitals against the required 5,000 to run an effective scheme. Our ambulance service is very poor. And we've seen patients being carried in wheelbarrows and all other places, some on bicycles, some on horseback. The only the little challenges I can see is on manpower. The national policy on emergency medical services and ambulance services are expected to reverse this trend. We've been able as today to reduce uh, road crash, I mean a uh, response to accident scenes uh, to 15 minutes and uh, we're working hard to ensure again that that's further reduced. What we need to have is a basket fund where all organizations put in something to be able to respond properly. The ongoing meeting will develop a blueprint for the implementation of emergency medical services, which will in turn reduce preventable deaths and disabilities. Uche Wizu, NTA News. A bill seeking to end gas flaring and promote increased use of gas in transportation in Nigeria has been passed for second reading by the House of Representatives. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Unkwo reports that the legislators also passed three bills for third reading, including the one that seeks to amend the Electoral Act. The bill does not only seek to ensure an end to health hazards associated with gas flaring, but to tap into Nigeria's gas master plan as a means of boosting the nation's economic growth by converting the wasted gas into a compressed natural gas for transportation. The bill was sponsored by Representative Igarewe Duma from a Boeing state. Mr. Speaker, according to the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, this country lost about 523 billion naira worth of revenue from the volume of gas fled between 2015 and 2016. The bill we now read the second time. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. I serve it. Diplomatic matters came on the floor as Representative Johnson Abuna Yeman from Edo State moved the motion and the need for the House of Representatives Committees on Foreign Affairs and Interior to meet with relevant agencies to fashion out modalities for the duration of visa by various countries. There's no reason why the U.S. gives us more than two years political visa where we cannot give them the same. I don't go to countries that give me single, single entry because they don't want my business. I would ask that the matter be referred to the committee so that we engage with them, take a proper look at Nigeria's engagement with the United States. We need to reciprocate diplomacy. 
because simply dip the diplomacy is give and take. While the urgent need for security agencies to deploy security personnel to Kama and Burutin local government area of Kwara State to check the activities of gunmen was considered as moved by Representative Zakari Mohammed from Kwara State. Call on NEMA to deploy relief materials to affected communities to serve as succor to the affected families to let them start life again. Representative Dennis Abo from Enugu State moved the motion for a special budgetary intervention for the rehabilitation of the National Animal Production Research Institute, Zaria. Among the reports considered by the House Committee of the Whole include that of the Committees on Information, National Orientation, Ethics and Values on a bill to establish the National Agency for Ethics and Values and the Committee on Pension and the Committee on Maritime Safety, Education and Administration on a bill for an act to amend the NIMASA Act. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo Ntienu. Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed has called for a meaningful partnership with China to develop Nigeria's film and animation industry. The minister stated this in Abuja when he received a delegation of television production and animation companies from China. Anthony Forsen reports. Members of the delegation are from different production organizations in China. It is in this light that the Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed assured them that the federal government has put in place policies that are investment friendly. We have become really an investor's destination. With the efforts the government are putting in place, both in the area of ease of doing business to simplify business, you know, uh, procedures for doing business, and the various positive economic indices. This is the place to invest. The minister said Nigeria has abundant stories waiting to be told, but will, however, depend on the Chinese technology to unveil them to the world. And for it to make any meaningful impact, it has to contain the Nigerian culture. What we need is a meaningful partnership between this company and Nigeria to develop our animation technology to a level that will be not only be impactful and meaningful but will also be another vehicle through which we can promote the culture of Nigeria in its you know, diversity. He was, however, quick to note that animation is a fast-growing genre of the industry and deeply rooted in the Nigerian culture. Earlier, leader of the delegation had told the minister that their visit is born out of their desire to collaborate with Nigerian content producers, having known how rich the Nigerian culture is. He assured the minister that his delegation will seek full cooperation with their Nigerian counterparts. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Director General of the NTA, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, says information dissemination from the true African perspective remains the mandate of the Nigerian Television Authority and the organization is set to promote animation and cartoons with local content. He said this when he received a media team specialized in cartoon and animation from China. Adibola Brookslane, Sunday reports. To communicate stories, ideas, and concepts in a creative and original way. Experts say animation is one of the brilliant and innovative mechanisms to encourage children. Based on the collaboration that exists between Nigeria and China, especially through their media outfits, NTA and Star Times, the Chinese delegation are in the largest TV network in Africa to strengthen and promote Chinese animation in the Nigerian media industry. I hope um, by our advanced technology and your people's hardworking and intelligence, we can produce the more Nigeria elements new animations. With over 100 NTA stations spread across the country, in addition to other TV stations, the Director General of the NTA pointed out the facts, which is a missing link. Most of the cartoons our children, you know, watch are cartoons, you know, produced from different cultures and different backgrounds. Seize the opportunity to network 
with our content producers in Nigeria so that at the end of the day, we are able to produce our own cartoons based on our own culture and our own values for the benefit of our children. We have very beautiful cuisines. While exchanging pleasantries, the DG urged the delegation to take advantage of their visit to the country for some sightseeing and ensure that they have tastes of some Nigerian delicacies. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. A consultative forum aimed at making civil society organizations understand federal government's policies on past sector recovery was the focal point at an interactive session by Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Usman Ali reports. This interaction is a step further to bring out issues on policy actions, operations, governance and financial interventions to be implemented by federal government in the next five years with a view to improve the Nigerian electricity supply for economic growth. We know that the industries are not getting enough power. But the correct statement is not because there is no power. Because the reality is that we have 7,000 and we are selling five. So the conversation we should be having is how to connect to the two. Questions, observations and suggestions were raised on regulations and service delivery. In the end, hope for success and stability of electricity supply is what people here are craving for. There are a lot of issues, you know, that comes up that we do behind the curtain and we get the issue and make sure that consumers get the best and value for money. Usman Aliu, NTA News. Guests on NTA's current affairs program, Moment for Thought, have commended President Muhammadu Buhari for fighting corruption. The said corruption is capable of mortgaging the future of the younger generation. What is commonly referred to as the Dutch disease. Mm. And the Dutch disease led Nigeria to enjoy the awoof mentality, awoof money. We have to now make sure that as many people as possible, as many spheres of the economy as possible, are recruited into the fight against corruption. Moment for Thought comes up tonight at 11.30 a.m. 11.30 p.m. on the network service. For more on for more on doing the right thing, over to Ademola in our Lagos Network Center. Thank you, Donald. Um, good evening. Welcome to Lagos. An effective national quality policy to ensure that Nigerian products and services are highly rated in the certification index has been advocated. The resource persons at a nationwide promotional and awareness campaign on quality in Lagos said this can be achieved through consistent compliance. International standards. Annie Daniels reports. Quality is a word used in our everyday life and quite often relates to something being exceptionally good. Resource persons at this National Quality Implementation Project Conference cited serviceability, durability, reliability, features, aesthetics, conformance, performance, and perceived quality as characteristics of a good quality. They were quick to point out that absence of some of these characteristics has resulted in the rejection of Nigeria's products overseas. The certification index of China is more than 65%, India is more than 60%, Pakistan is more than 60%, but in Nigeria it is still at 4%. The media must be in the forefront, must understand what are the quality content. And once we understand what the quality contents are, we also will be able to drive quality. And that way we would evolve a quality culture in Nigeria. This training program, therefore, is aimed at bringing to the consciousness of manufacturers, producers and consumers the need to support Nigeria's competitiveness in trade and investment. Um, quality and standard benefits all. So that is the point where we are driving at. Who as a consumer whom the council stands vehemently to protect is the service. The project is funded by the European Union, implemented by UNIDO in collaboration with the federal government through the Consumer Protection Council. 
You are still watching NTA Network News. We now take a break for some messages. The news continues shortly. Stay with us. 2017, the Buhari administration delivered a number of unprecedented achievements. Generated power has gone up to 7,000 megawatts in 2017 from 3,000 megawatts in May 2015. More than 1.6 trillion naira has been spent on infrastructure for roads, bridges, housing, dams and railways. Nigeria moved up 24 places on the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business rankings and earned a place on the list of top 10 reformers in the world. Today, 5.2 million primary school children in 28,249 schools in 19 states are receiving a free meal daily. Our custom service recorded its highest ever revenue collection of 1 trillion naira in a single year. Our foreign exchange reserves grew by $12 billion, reaching the highest level since 2014. We added $250 million to the Sovereign Wealth Fund and officially moved out of recession. Bayes University, Abuja, one of the fastest growing private universities in Nigeria, commences postgraduate studies in the following fields MBA, MSc Business Administration, MSc International Relations and Diplomacy, MSc Mass Communication, MSc Economics, MSc Sociology, MSc Chemistry, MSc Animal and Environmental Sciences, and MSc Parasitology. For inquiries, call 081 3376 9658. That is 081-3376-9658 or email inquiries at baseuniversity.edu.ng. You can also visit www.baseuniversity.edu.ng. Admission is in progress. Come to Bayes University Abuja. Get the best. Learn to leave. Announcer, registrar. Sensitivity is a short pain which occurs when teeth are exposed to hot, cold or acidic things. Cold water from the fridge would, would trigger off the sensitivity. A lot of people would accept anyway and just grin and bear the pain. What I would say to the patient is switch to Sensodyne, make it your daily toothpaste over a period of time would reduce to its sensitivity. And a lot of them come back to, tell, you know, to thank me, to say that, wow, it's just something so simple. It adds the sparkle back into their life. Indomie noodles. Four please. Yo. <laughs> this is not my Indomie. Please, sir, it's not Indomie. Don't call it Indomie. Sir, the taste is the difference. The difference is in the taste. That's why my brothers, my mommy, my daddy, and I all enjoy admission. So very delicious Indomie noodles. <laughs> the difference is the taste. Uncle, now see people bus with this, so. Everybody, step comics for an call. Yes, now. Nah. Just here. Drink. Comix. Now, easy to use solution for itchy cup. <laughs> Comix. Easy to use. <sighs> Kariwaka. Experience, they say, is the best teacher. They hold us from the sea. Thank God that we came back home. They should not go with that because it's not, no, it's not good. It's, it's a very bad place. So they, they just may have us. Even now, sir, they are shooting the boat they are going to use to go to Italy. Let us stop it. Our country is good. Our country is a blessed country. Now, now I know, say I know our country is a blessed country. I didn't mean I know before I could not travel from Nigeria to Libya. I know how much I spent. Let these personal experiences serve as a lesson to all who would repeat their mistakes. A word is enough for the wise. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Welcome back. The Central Bank of Nigeria's statistics indicates that Nigeria's Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index in January 2018 is 57.3%. For details of this and more, here is Moplang Dakok with Business News. Hello there, welcome to Business News. The Central Bank of Nigeria disclosed that the Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index 
For the month of January, stood at 57.3 index points, indicating expansion in the manufacturing sector for the 10th consecutive month. The index, however, grew at a slower rate when compared to the previous month's 59.3 index points, a record high in 2017. Nigeria has been ranked 90th in the world and 23rd in Africa on budget transparency out of 115 countries globally and 38 countries in Africa in the 2017 Budget Index Survey. Nigeria's score on the index dropped from 24% in 2015 to 17%. The federal government has expressed its resolve to sustain growth and production of cotton in the country. To this end, the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment says it is partnering with other key players in the production of cotton. It will serve as a forum for exchange of technical information, sharing of experiences of cotton development among member states, which will provide a platform for business linkages between Nigeria stakeholders in cotton with the potential international buyers of cotton links. Trading on the Nigerian Stock Exchange closed Thursday on a positive note. The All Share Index gained 0.26% to close at 44,460.18, while market capitalization closed at 15.9 trillion naira. Here's a graphic summary. the package. I am Moplang Dakok. Kemi Inibadon is next on our lineup with stories from that zone. Thank you, Donald. Good evening and welcome to Ibadon. Senate and House of Representatives Committees on Agriculture have sponsored a training for women and youths on integrated agriculture entrepreneurship. The training held at the National Center for Agricultural Mechanization in Ilori drew participants from Kwara and Ocean States. Kemi Bissisoni has details. The participants who were trained on integrated agricultural entrepreneurship, such as fish farming, poultry, Snow rearing, among others, will also give in starter packs as capital to kick start their businesses. The member representing Ilori Southeast Federal Constituency, Dr. Abubakar Ramuda Konike, represented by Mr. Dejiaki Boyowa, reiterated his commitment to encourage and empower youth to acquire skill and become entrepreneurs. We were going to encourage as many youths as are ready to devote their time to entrepreneurship. The head of department, planning, monitoring and evaluation of the National Center for Agricultural Mechanization, Mr. Julius Omishori, urged the participants to be good ambassadors of the center and should feel free to refer to the center if the need arises. The participants expressed appreciation to the center as well as the Senate and the House of Representatives Committee on Agriculture in Ilori. Kemi, NTA News. Operatives of the special anti robbery squad SARS that busted a gang of car robbers in Ocean State have been commended for diligence in their role of operation. The commendation was given by the State Commissioner of Police, Femiho Adeoye, while parading the suspects in Ushubu. Correspondent Olabodiarewa has more. That was the Commissioner of Police, Ocean State, honoring the SARS officers for their gallantry in the recovery of 19 Toyota vehicles stolen between 2015 and last year. According to the police, a routine stop and search operation in Oshubo on 16 December 2017 led to the arrest of Timothy Oladele, who was in possession of a stolen Toyota Camry. Upon interrogation, he owned up to being a member of the gang of car thieves. Further investigations led to the arrest of 45-year-old Ken de Badmos. At the point of thinking of it, that never I was arrested for this again. Commissioner of Police Femi Adoye described the arrest in December as a breakthrough for the police, adding that reports of car theft had reduced since then. It was that gang that had been on the prowl 
going everywhere to dispossess people of their vehicles. He said anyone whose car had been stolen could approach the state police command to see if any of the recovered vehicles were theirs. In Oshobola, Bodarewa, NTA News. And that's it from Ibadan. Donald, it's back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Kemi. Now a bit on sports and happenings around the world after this timeout. <laughs> Everybody, step comments for an call. Yes, now, nah. just here. Yeah. Drink. Comix. Now, easy to use solution for each call. <laughs> Comix. Easy to use. <sighs> Kariwaka. Our Anchor Boras program has created an agricultural revolution. In September 2015, we imported 644,000 tons of rice, costing more than 5 million US dollars per day. By September 2017, rice imports dropped by 95% to 22,000 tons. Our maize crop has exceeded 10 million tons this year. And through our rice and maize program, we now have 12.2 million farmers. We are now the world's second largest producer of sorghum after the United States, third in millet after India, and we lead the world's production of yam and cassava. We've created numerous plantations solely for the export market, and our plan is to increase the agricultural sector from 25 to 49% of our GDP, thereby reducing poverty and increasing food security. With gratitude to God for a meritorious and selfless life, the federal government of Nigeria announces the passing on to glory of Dr. Alice Ifeanyichuku Ekwemi, GCON, former Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1979 to 1983. The side event occurred on 19th November 2017 in the London Hospital. He was aged 85. In recognition of his immense contributions to the social, economic, and political development of our dear country, Nigeria. Area. The late Dr. Ekwemi will be accorded a state burial befitting of his status. Details of funeral program are as follows. Friday, 2nd February 2018, 8 a.m. Lying in State, Venue, Ekwemi Compound, Oko. 11 a.m. Funeral Service, Venue, St. John the Divine Church, Oko. Interment, Ekwemi Compound, Oko. Reception at Alex Ekwemi Compound, Oko. Sunday, 11th February 2018, 9 a.m. Out in service, venue, St. John the Divine Church, Oko, signed Secretary to the Government of the Federation. The family of Colonel John Madaki, retired, announces the funeral arrangements of the former military governor of Katsina State and commander of the Guards Brigade as follows. Vigil Mass and service of songs at Our Lady Queen of Nigeria, Pro Cathedral, Garaki, Abuja, tonight. Mass and Wake Keep at Gawu Babangida, Niger State on Friday, 2nd February 2018. Lion State, Record Mass and Interment at Gawu Babangida on Saturday, 3rd February 2018. Reception follows at Family Ground, Gawu Babangida, Niger State, the same day. A Thanksgiving service will hold on Sunday, 4th February 2018 at St. John Viani Parish, Gawu Babangida. Announcer, Lieutenant Colonel Buhari M. Madaki for the family. French President Emmanuel Macron is in Tunisia for a two-day working visit where he is expected to address the nation's parliament on steps to further boost the close, ma close partnership between the two countries. For this and other stories trending across the globe, let's join Adu Adamu Also. Thank you and welcome. We start from North Africa, where French President Emmanuel Macron is in Tunisia for two days to further boost close partnership between France and the North African country. A four-point accord setting out ties for years to come in the economy, security, judiciary, cultural and educational affairs were being signed. His office said that Macron, traveling with a delegation of business leaders and cultural figures, will give a major speech Thursday before Parliament to Zimbabwe now, where European Union delegation Caroline Harare has said that Zimbabweans are now expressing themselves freely since the ouster of ex-president Robert Mugabe in November. 
Speaking to her in an EU-funded justice sector support program in the capital, one of the EU envoys, Philip Dan Venn, said that the Western Bloc had realized that since the ouster of the former president, the country was becoming a democracy. Scores of Rohingya villagers in Myanmar have been massacred and buried in five mass graves, according to an exclusive investigation by the Associated Press News Agency. Estimates suggest 400 members of the persecuted minority were killed by Burmese troops. The mass killing is believed to have taken place on August 27, 2017, and survivors said that soldiers had tried to cover up evidence of the atrocity. And that is it from here. The news continues. President Mohamed Buhari has congratulated the home-based Super Eagles of Nigeria on their victory over Sudan in the semi-final of the 2018 champion, Championship of African Nations Chan in Marrakesh, Morocco. A statement by the Special Advisor to the President on Media, Femi Adishino, says President Buhari joins millions of football-loving Nigerians in celebrating the spectacular performance of the team, which qualified them for the final on Sunday with Morocco. The president commended their hard work and indomitable spirit and urged them to remain focused and determined as they go for gold in the final match on Sunday. The president assures them of the unflinching support, goodwill and prayers of the federal government and all Nigerians as they soar to victory. Invited Super Falcons players to resume training in Abuja on Friday as Nigerians hail home-based Super Eagles for booking ticket for Sunday final in African Nations Championship. Tamara Ebiwe has the report. Nigerians have called on the home-based Eagles to go all out and make the country proud when they take on host nation Morocco on Sunday in the final of the African Nations Championship. It is 11 players against uh, 11 players, so the psychologist must work on all the players to really be at their best. The home base Eagles beat their Sudanese counterparts by a lone goal to reach the competition's final for the first time. Morocco defeated Libya 3-1 in the other semis. The 35 Super Falcons players invited to camp by the Nigeria Football Federation, NFF, will start training on